Um, so next is Doug Bergfeld, and um, Doug specializes in drawing out the hidden potential inside every team and views Agile as the key to unlocking legacy organizational structures and developing a team culture of continuous improvement. He established the first Agile Center of Excellence at the State of Maine during his time at the Project Management Office. And the poll that he would like us to submit is, my biggest frustration or barrier to practicing Agile is upper management interference or resistance, middle management resistance, training or coaching is hard to get, or the pace of work or the backlog is so fast or big that we can't get started, and last option, resistance from task teams. 32% of us said that upper management is the issue, 20% said middle management, 15% said training is hard to get, 12% said the pace of work is fast, we can't get started, um, and 20% said resistance from task teams. Welcome, Doug. Thank you very much, everybody. I'm going to get my slideshow running here. Hello, my name is Doug Bergfeld, as Elizabeth said, and I want to thank each and every one of you for being here today. And uh, what Elizabeth didn't tell you is I've also spent time as a radio presenter, a theater director, and a middle school teacher. Those things inform a little bit about what I'm going to talk to you about today. Now, before the first thing I'm going to do is a little bit radical for the, for the uh, venue that we're in in which I cannot see you, but I'm gonna ask for a show of hands, and I really wanna get you to get those hands up even though I can't see you. How many of you have feelings? All right? I'm guessing all the hands are up even though I can't see them, so I think that worked great. So, um, uh, so you guys are interested in Agile or doing Agile, and what I wanna to talk to you about is the aspects of culture change that are the most important and are often ignored and that is is that you're dealing with humans and humans have feelings and culture change comes from the feelings that people have and you can't control people's feelings but there are things you can do to create an environment which will lead to an evolutionary path which will get to get you where you want to go and the last thing i'm going to ask you to believe which i understand you may it may be suspended is that where you want to go with software development is to create a creative culture, right? Um, not a procedural culture, right? But a creative culture. And so the things that I'm gonna to talk to you about um, are, are shown to um, foster creative cultures, growth and flourishing. So this is, and I will say one last thing, is um, uh, if you've been in an Agile team, you know that some of them work really well, and some of them feel a little bit forced and a little bit lagged, right? So what's the difference? When it works, it works great. Why doesn't it work every time? We're doing the same things. This will also inform that. So stuff you already know, right? You probably know the manifesto and the principles, very important stuff. You probably know a bunch of methods. You might even be using a large framework like SAFE or one of the other ones. Um, you might even have uh, specialized rituals that you've developed and specialized activities for your team. Um, and you might even delve into the deeper philosophies and systems that support um, agile and software development, DevOps, extreme programming, all these other things, right? All important, but by themselves will only get you so far. The problem that you have, you have a problem with culture. You probably have a problem with culture. And once you get that problem with culture fixed, you'll have another problem with culture. And then after that's all set, it's a problem with culture, right? Whether it's the culture that changes within your own group or leadership culture versus management culture versus programming culture versus procurement culture versus administrative structure culture. There's a lot of different cultures. And how can you change all of them? Right? And, you know, hey, Where's the magic? I'm doing this agile thing. There was supposed to be magic. I felt the magic at first, and now I don't feel the magic anymore, right? Well, don't get divorced. We can make it, we can make it work, right? And so what I'm gonna to talk to you about, right, are three things. This is, the, this is the entire thing, right? Compassion, simplicity, and humility, right? They don't have anything more complicated than that, though there are a whole bunch of words to support it, right? And I know, right? You're in government, 
you're in technology. And what I'm telling you is compassion, simplicity, and humility. Right. It's not necessarily easy, right, to find where you may be. Maybe you've already got that running, and that's fantastic. But in my experience in government, you know, it's not really under every piece of paper. So in order to do this, in order to create um, compassion, simplicity, and humility in your agile teams and foster the creative culture, you have to focus on these things the same way you focus on your teams. And you have to do it for 15 minutes a day, just like your stand-ups. But in this case, we'll call them sort of sit-downs, right? Because this is a time for you and every member of your team, whether you do it together or do it um, as part of your process or they just do it, um, to sit down and reflect and think about, right, a particular meaning of these um, three concepts. And the reason why this presentation is called the DAO of Agile is these are the three core concepts of the DAO. Okay, so compassion. We all know what compassion is. It's pretty easy, right? It's caring about other people. Um, but I'm going to put more of a fine point on it, right? It's the, you must recognize the humanity of every single person on the team, even if it's the boss, right? Even if you don't like them, even if they're terrible, right? Um, even if they, they look impervious to pain and suffering, you still... Um, have to recognize their humanity, right? And that's going to actually help you recognize your own humanity, which will be very important to you. And I understand this is high concept right now. I promise I will get more practical as I go. Yes, in 10 minutes, Elizabeth. So, compassion, right? These are some of the practical things that we, that Agile asks us to do, that equal compassion, right? There are many more, right? But you give the teams what you need, what they need, right? Trust them and let them go, right? That's compassion. That's the element of compassion in practice, right? You take away barriers, right? Those barriers, though, may not be in the team or at work. Those barriers might be have a sick kid, needs time off to take care of that child, need to work from home for a while, or I'm going through something. All those things are barriers. And if you're a leader in Agile or even just a team member, Paying attention to those, the full range of what people may have for barriers is going to help you feel better. It's going to help them be more productive. But it's also important to do it, not just because it works, and it does work very well, but because it feels good. It feels good for you. It feels good for the team. And it just turns out that people do things over and over if it feels good. And they stop doing it if it doesn't feel good. I know. Seems simple. Which brings me to simplicity. Couldn't have written a better segue. I have more things written about simplicity than any other slide, by the way. I just noticed that, right? And so it comes from a precept, right? Work without intention is an empty motion. And this has to do with understanding the vision, understanding the purpose of your work. is more important to understand the reasons why we do things, right? It's easy if we talk about reasons to get into, well, we've always done it that way, or because in 1942 this happened, or because that's what the boss wants, right? Those reasons aren't gonna get you where you wanna go. Only a focus on the intention of the outcome of who you're trying to serve or the thing you're trying to make will get you there. And you can't just have that in your own head. You have to pitch that to everybody that you're working with in whatever way you can, right? Here's another thing that, that simplicity asks us to do that's not always easy. Always stop doing things that don't work. Again, we may encounter many things that don't work, but we feel compelled to do them over and over again. This is a time to bring the team together, right? And, be, and, uh, and trust them to help you stop doing that thing that doesn't work. And again, back to the intention. Ask the question, what is the intention when somebody wants to do something? If their answer is because, it's probably the wrong answer. If it starts with because, that means you're going to get some reasons, right? which is what led them to this decision. But what we really care about is what they intend on happening next. And that's the answer we want. A little bit more about simplicity, right? Everybody wants to measure everything and measuring is really important, really important, except that it doesn't solve the problem. It just tells you you have one, right? You'll never solve a problem or build a cabinet by only measuring. So you need to do sort of less measuring, right? and more doing. Um, the more you do, the more results you have, 
And the better the results, the less people really care about measuring. People love to measure, and they especially like to measure when things have gone wrong. So, talking is better than writing, right? So, there's a whole bunch of science around this that I don't have time to get into, which I'd surely love to in the Q&A if you're interested. Um, but your brain has absolutely no center for writing and written language and being able to conceive things that are written down. It involves tons of co-opted parts of the brain that have other purposes. Talking has a single place in the brain that only deals with verbal communication. That's why it's the simplest. That's why you should use it. And again, culture doesn't change, can't be forced, can't come from a framework. It comes from um, an evolution of a group of people who slowly decide to do the same thing because it feels good, it's emotionally satisfying, and, um, and they get to experience that community. Think of all the things you've ever done in a group that you've loved, right? They are all this, they all have common elements, right? It's this compassion, simplicity, humility thing. And teams that you've been in that haven't worked out so much probably lacked all of those things, likely. Humility. This is the hardest thing um, for people to get, even if you think you are a humble person. I, very humble, the humblest. But, um, uh, uh, but it's still difficult, even if you're humble, because it means you're daring not to be the king. You're daring not to take all the responsibility for everything and carry the load on yourself, right? You're daring to be imperfect, which allows you to fail, which allows you to learn and try again. And so, you know, failure is a thing that only courageous people are, are able to do. And that's, and, and, and that's where um, the other two, compassion and simplicity, come in. Don't do complicated things. That way the failure is easy to recover from, and so you learn faster, right? Dare to try. So um, how do you use these three things on a daily basis? Some of them are, the, are precepts of Agile that you're already doing, but some of them are actually taking some time to think about, was I compassionate in that moment? Could I have been more compassionate in that moment? Is this really the simplest way, right? Do I understand the intention? Do the people around me understand the intention, right? And then humility. Am I putting myself before others, right? Or am I putting myself behind others? That's bad too, right? And again, with humility, it's a little egalitarian, but you are only one among equals no matter who you are, right? Doesn't matter if you're the big cheese at the top, right? Or the guy that sort of works at the parking lot and helps you park the cars. All are equals in their, in their task and their value. Um, and if you have to think about that for yourself, because that makes it really easy to think about other people. And that's what makes an agile team, right, actually work when that circumstance is felt by the, all the members of the team. Resilience is better than power, right? Um, being able to try and try again is better than being able to say, we're doing it my way and get your way all the time. You won't learn a thing doing that. No one will. Um, so resilience, try, fail, flexibility is what's going to make your team evolve, right? Again, okay. evolve means natural selection. How am I doing? We're, we're at the time box. So you okay. So I will <laughs> stop by saying a bunch of stuff here, which we can talk about, and plenty to talk about. This is my contact information. Thank you very much. Hope to see you in question time. Thank you, Doug. You are a lot of fun, and that was great information. And if any of you would like to follow Doug to the Q&A meeting room, I'm posting a link now. Um, you can also chat him in Slack.